Hello, everybody, Kane here today with an episode of Wildlife Park, and today we are back on the world to add in two, that's right, two brand new exhibits to the zoo, being Mira Cats and Giant Anteaters. And the reason I picked both of these uh, were for various reasons. I picked the Anteaters because, well, Giant Anteaters are absolutely amazing, and you are wrong if you disagree with me on that, but the other th reason I picked the Mira Cats is just, uh, well, you'll see. It, it, it was basically just one block that made me pick to build them. So, yeah, you know, kind of weird, but whatever. Anyway, here with the Miracat exhibit, um, it, it's another small exhibit, kind of like our, uh, our tortoises or Tasmanian devils or a bunch of other small animals we've gotten before. But this one I decided to do something different with. You'll notice for a tiny exhibit, it's incredibly deep. Uh, it's much deeper than we usually build these things, but that's for a good reason, because unlike most of our other exhibits, I decided to make a fair deal of it underground. Uh, I built an entire tunnel system that you'll see kind of pop up here in a few seconds, because, well, they're mirror cats. I, I figured it was probably a good idea to try and build some tunnels for it. I thought it would look interesting and be kind of different than what we usually have. I obviously didn't build any viewing areas into it just because I, I didn't really feel like I needed to. But here you can see me setting up the uh, the tunnel system, setting up the various chambers and hallways. Uh, it, it was meant to be a bit more complex, but the exhibit was a bit too small for what I originally had planned. So we're, we kind of just ended up with this, but I think it looks super cool. And in the end, this exhibit turned out a lot better than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> uh, anyway, though. Uh, you can see, I, I wasn't really sure how big the mirror cats were, or if they were going to be able to get through certain areas, so I decided to make it about a block and a half tall for the tunnels. I probably could have made it smaller, and just like a singular block instead of a block and a half, but I don't know, I thought this might look a bit better. So, yeah, and I, and I also just didn't want them suffocating in the ground, because I would have been very sad, very, very sad. But, I think in the end this worked out pretty well, overall. I think the tunnels look really cool. Um, when we go to the final showcase of the builds we do go into them a little bit so you guys can actually see that and yeah i will say one thing that the tunnels really did limit that i'm kind of sad about is the fact i can't i couldn't really uh well decorate the ground too much because it would just fall into the tunnels uh for certain blocks like sand and uh what's the other one i use i think it's concrete powder yeah, that, yeah, the concrete powder I'm using there. Uh, yeah, so that kind of made things a bit difficult when it came to detailing. But oh, in the end, I think the exhibit turns out pretty well. Um, it's probably not the best build we've ever done, but I like it for the fact that it's got unique concepts that we haven't done in any other build that make it rather interesting to look at and definitely make it stand out amongst everything else. Which, I have to say, I'm pretty happy with so far with the savannah area and everything since, like, the gorilla. We've done a... I think we've done a pretty good job of making each exhibit really stand out and have its own little bits of character and interest to it, which I've uh, I've enjoyed quite a bit. So yeah, you can see here. <laughs> um, I kind of messed up the fencing on this, and you won't really see it in here, but uh, you might actually even see it during the next time lapse. A couple of mirror cats escaped because, yeah, I uh, I didn't think to really build up the fence around this too well. So yeah, there there may have been a couple of escapes here and there, but it worked out all right in the end. So who cares? But yeah, also, I should quickly mention, uh, those giant terracotta pillars I built there, they are meant to be ter uh, termite mounds, because, well, I don't know, I just felt like that probably fit with meerkats for some reason. I don't actually know if they eat termites, I know they eat insects, but I don't know. I really should do more research into these animals before we start the t before I start recording, shouldn't I? Maybe I'll do that in the future, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Uh, but anyway, I thought this was a really cool addition to our savannah area, and a really nice little way to kind of continue it before we get into the uh, the real big exhibits like the elephants and the giraffes and zebras and all those because uh, yeah those are <laughs> those are gonna be quite the the time investment but this exhibit didn't take too long to build so uh, once I finished it I decided I was gonna do another one and that will be our uh, our giant anteater exhibit which I believe we start now yep so this is right behind the gorilla exhibit well not right behind but it's right next to the gorilla exhibit and I kind of decided to put it here because it wasn't quite in the African section yet, but it was getting close to where all the exhibits are starting to transition to that more sandy, deserty, savanna-like uh, environment, so I thought that was a good area to throw these guys in. Uh, and we do some really interesting stuff with this, and I have to say, this is probably going on my... This, this build is going to go on my list of 
like, you know, favorite exhibits we've done so far. It's, I don't know what, what it is about it. Maybe it's just the color pattern or the color scheme I went for with the blocks or just the terrain itself or I don't know. But man, this build really just, ah, it was awesome to build. It was a lot of fun. And something I think I'm gonna replicate probably again in both this series and probably Dinos. Why? Because, well, I, I think it was a really fun build and I think it could definitely, with a bit more improvement for sure, and if I probably had future versions to get me those granite stairs and slabs, it would look even better. But I think this is something I'd definitely like to try again to see if I can improve it anymore. Um, over there you can see me real quick. <laughs> I wasn't really sure how I wanted to do the viewing areas for these. Um, so I initially started out doing uh, exhibit glass on top of uh, iron bars, but then decided just to switch it out for pure exhibit glass. And I think that was probably a better choice. The, uh, the combination of exhibit glass and iron bars didn't look all that great, but it was an interesting concept and something I'm kind of interested in maybe trying again to see if I could get it to work properly, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. But yeah, just coming around here now, just throwing in the last couple support beams for the fences, really kind of just... This exhibit was actually a lot larger than I think I meant it to be, but I think that's okay. I was kind of modeling it a bit off of a, uh, a giant anteater exhibit near in one of the zoos near where I live, which is kind of like this. It's kind of, it, it's situated on a big hill. So you start, you, I think the viewing area is like lower down and most exhibits this big hill and the anteaters typically hide on the very back of the hill, uh, right by the fences. So yeah, I kind of tried to replicate that a bit. But the rock walls here, this is the part that, I don't know, I had the most fun with, and that was because instead of doing our typical stone andesite cobblestone, we went with granite and andesite. And a, a few cobblestone slabs, just because I needed some slabs on there to kind of break up the uh, the lines a bit. But I think it turned out really well. I, th I think it's got a really interesting look and color to it, which, I don't know, we, we just don't have anywhere else in the zoo, so it really just stands out and has this real interesting warm feel to it that I absolutely adore and was very, very happy with. And as for the ground texture, it's just the basic kind of ground texture we've been using everywhere. The uh, mixture of grass and uh, coarse dirt, that's what it's called. And uh, yeah, and then the rest of the terrain just really comes down to a couple termite mounds, some logs, and uh, some grasses. But I don't think I have much else to say about what we do here, so I'm going to let the, the time lapse finish up, and then I'll meet back up with you guys at the end of the episode. All right, everybody, here we are with the final product of the builds, and I have to say I'm very happy with them, as you guys probably heard me raving about in the uh, <laughs> in the time lapse. So, I guess we should, yeah, we should look at the mirror cats first, but the, this exhibit, it's interesting, and these guys keep congregating up here, and I don't know why. I keep, like, trying to get them away from there, but they all just hop up to the top of this mound and just sit here. It's kind of weird. You're like, well, I guess maybe that's, is there AI like programs to like help them find the highest spot they can get to or something? So they can like be sentries or something? Cause if that's the case, that's cool. But I think it's just weird random chance that they're doing this. Anyway, <laughs> as you can see, I, I think this exhibit turned out pretty well overall. Um, 
not the most decorated. Like I said, uh, due to the tunnels, I kind of had trouble getting enough blocks in here to really vary up the ground texture, which kind of limited how many plants we could place. But I think I think we got a decent amount in still, and I forgot I'm in the uh, game mode three, and that's basically just so I can go down here and show you guys the uh, the tunnels. This one's not really a tunnel; it's more just like a, a pit. But if we head in here, you guys can see the uh, the actual tunnels, and I mean I'm sure it's dark as all heck for you guys, but we have some cats that are down here. They're just kind of chilling out and hanging out here, having fun. Also, the sand castles I mentioned. Yep, that's it. That is the block that inspired this exhibit. I, just purely because I wanted to use the sand castle. No other reason. It wasn't like, oh, I really want to get the cat into the zoo. It was, no, no, it was just, I want the sand castle. What animal can I have with the sand castle? And this was the animal I chose. Speaking of which, as, a, as always, you know, just, Zawa, you guys are doing a great job making these animals. These mirror cats look absolutely fantastic, and yeah, I'm, <laughs> they look cool. It's it's fun to have them in the zoo. Anyway, though, for as much as this exhibit was interesting with concept, it may, need to, may have needed to be executed better. However, if we quickly just zoom over this way, ta-da! The exhibit that was executed perfectly in both design and concept and is again one of my new favorite exhibits because da 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 granite walls the best thing i've come up with since um um i have no idea it's it's just maybe i guess this exhibit since this exhibit this is the best idea i've had just using a different block type for rock walls that actually sounds really sad when i say that out loud <laughs> makes me not sound very creative but Eh, maybe I'm not. Who knows? Who knows? But anyway, again, overall, I love this exhibit. I love how this has turned out. I love the combination of the grasses, the granite, uh, the termite mounds. It just gives us all a very warm kind of, I don't know, inviting kind of summery kind of feel, and I love that about it. And yeah, it just, it's awesome, and I absolutely adore this build. And if we quickly hop down here, I also adore these anteaters because they are derpy. Just like real anteaters. And I love that about them. They just, <laughs> these guys just look so derpy and like, like there's nothing going on behind those eyes, but also really cool at the same time. The model is absolutely fantastic. I'm thinking, I don't remember which mod this is from, but I'm gonna say it's probably Zoocraft Discoveries. So like for that mod, you guys have done a great job making these anteaters. They look fantastic. And if I can quickly find one that's doing this, um, they do actually stick their tongues out. And they were doing it earlier, but I can't. Oh, oh, there we go. Here's one doing it. Look at that. He's actually sticking his tongue out to get the like termites or ants. That's, come on, stop hiding in the grass. There we go. <laughs> that's super cool. I, I think that's an awesome feature that they actually did that. Um, I, I really like that. Anyway, so that's the exhibits we have for today. So I hope you guys enjoyed the uh, little two episode or two exhibit combo this episode. Let me know what exhibits you guys would like to see next episode, be it elephants, giraffes, whatever uh hopefully i'll be able to do some of the larger animal exhibits soon i just kind of felt low energy today so i didn't really feel like doing two big exhibits or a single big exhibit or whatever but yeah anyway thank you all for watching hope you've all enjoyed make again make sure to let me know what animals you want to see next episode and until next time guys see ya